today I want to share a story about humility. A writer imagines Mary, the mother of Jesus, as an old woman, reliving her life with Joseph, raising Jesus, remembering first when the angel appeared to her as a young girl, how she humbled herself to God's will. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. She then remembered his birth, Joseph's dream, and traveling to Egypt. This author also continues with Mary's reflection on the day of the crucifixion when Jesus told John to care for and protect his mother. She remembers the pain and the humiliation of that day. She wanted to reach for him with all her might, her love, and bury his sorrow in her breast to tell him he was the son she needed most. Would not the God who pitied Abraham also pity her? Would he allow her to suffer even what the patriarch had been spared? The sacrifice of a child. All her life she loved the God whose angel had spoken to her, calling her highly favored. How could a woman whose son was dying on a Roman cross ever consider herself favored? Suddenly her own words came back to her as though a younger version of herself was whispering them in her ear. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. The midday sky had blackened, but she could still see her son twist, see his twisted form on the cross, his eyes searching hers. Thorns circled his forehead in the shape of a crown, a crude reminder of the sign the Roman government governor had fastened to the wood, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. She thought of the Magi and their priceless gifts, the gold and the incense, royal treasures that helped them to survive while they were in Egypt. She always wondered about the myrrh. Now she knew. It was embalming oil for the king the wise men had come to worship. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? His cry pierced her. The earth shook violently and she fell to her knees, barely able to complete the words of the song for the man who hung dead on the cross. Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, and am not silent. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised, despised by the people, who see me and mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. Yet me, you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O oh Lord, be not far off. O oh my strength, come quickly to help me. You fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. That's Psalm 22. By the time Mary opened her eyes, the setting sun had turned the city into a golden land. She smiled, wiping the tears from her wrinkled face. How true the angel's words had been. No woman from Eve onward had ever been as blessed as she, the mother of the Messiah. Yes, the past was alive inside her, but it was the future that filled her with joy. Soon, she would see her son again, and this time, it would be his hands that would wipe the last, the last of her tears. After thinking about Mary's story of pure humility, I want to share a physical exercise in humility with you. Someone said, all streams flow to the sea because it is lower than they are. Humility gives it its power. There's a yoga mudra, a kneeling posture of exercise, whereby bringing your head to your chest, 
while extending your arms up and out behind you. You can practice placing your head beneath your heart. And from this umling position, you can't help but tire. And so you must put your arms down. With your head beneath your heart, you must stop doing. Soon after learning this, I came upon a woman who had been a nun. And she told me that she would practice for days upon days similar postures of the Gregorian chant. Incline, bow, and profound bow, each bringing the head lower and lower to the earth. This holds a powerful lesson. Time and time again, the head must be brought beneath the heart or the ego swells. If you do not bend, life will bend you. In this way, humility is accepting that your head belongs beneath your heart, with your thinking subordinate to your feeling, with your will subordinate to the higher order. This acceptance is key. Lay your head down and the world of being will open its joys. Here are some suggestions. Sit quietly on your knees as you breathe and incline forward. After a time, breathe deeply. And as you exhale evenly, bring your head below your heart while extending your arms behind you. After a time, bring your head, if you can, to touch the floor and offer thanks for being humbled. So we come back to our question. Are we truly humbled before our God? Or are we just saying we are humble? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, open our hearts to your will for our lives. Guide our paths. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a good week.